Okay, John H. If you're watching this, I found your coin collection that you buried in the basement uh, back in the 1980s, maybe, before you installed the uh, security system in 1987. Yeah, let me know if you want it back. Wait a minute. What if you install the security system to protect that coin collection you had buried in the basement, which I dug up? Hmm. I may be better have those coins evaluated. So what that was about was uh, I'm clearing this area back here for the new electrical service and uh, the old burglar alarm interface was there. And when I took it down and pried it open with a crowbar, because nobody left me a key for it, <laughs> and it was locked, I found the invoice and with information about the owner's name and uh, the uh, alarm was ordered on September 13th, 1987 at a cost of $1,092. So, but... uh. I know that the house became vacant in the 90s and has been vacant much of the time since then. So in the last video, I ended saying it's winter and the work's gonna slow down, but uh, this is January and I'm still working because it's been mild in the middle of Michigan for this uh, uh, early winter. And uh, when the temps are above freezing, I can still go and uh, mix some cement or mortar and work on those retaining walls in the basement. So that's what I've been doing. It seems like I don't have a lot of progress to show show you uh, for this video, but uh, I really have been working. I'm no schlub, as my son-in-law says. I've been mostly working in the basement, rebuilding the retaining walls, and uh, it's just very time-consuming. Working outside, outside the door with a wheelbarrow and an old camping shovel, mixing cement one bag at a time and then uh, carrying it into the house in uh, five gallon buckets and then down the basement stairs and uh, back and forth hundreds of times. Anyway, I am making progress. It's just hard to show it. So I've been uh, building, re rebuilding the retaining walls in the basement. This is the middle section of the house and it's just about ready to have the new ledges uh, poured. I've got to start pouring the uh, slab on the ledges of the Michigan cellar. Uh, the first part I did was here in the area where the new electrical service panel is going to be. Right where the old one was a long time ago. I'm always finding little artifacts like uh, the Fisher-Price uh, thing from that toy. I found inside one of the cold air returns when I took down uh, some of the ductwork that was still here. Yep, stuff here and there. I don't think I'm gonna leave it there. I'm learning a little bit more about the history of the house all the way along, every now and then. Uh, a few weeks ago, I looked out as I was working and there was a Flint City truck sitting on the street with the window down. So I came out and the uh, tax assessor was uh, just looking over the house, wanting to see what we were doing. And uh, we talked for quite a while about the house. And then uh, the next day, he brought me back a two-page uh, record of the tax records for the last 70 years, which had drawings on it. And... Uh, there used to be an old wooden fire escape uh, stairway on the back of the house from the upstairs down to over the roof and to the ground. And uh, there was a record of the fire that burned a hole in the roof in 1963. You guys, uh, if you saw the video where I was working on the roof, I wondered about the charred uh, rafters up there, 1963. And it cost $500 to repair that, that uh, fire. 
So yeah, a little bit more all the time. I wanted to answer a couple of questions that uh, some of you have been asking. Uh, a lot of people are curious about costs. What does it cost to buy a house like this, of course, and uh, what does it cost to renovate? So I'm gonna talk about money a little bit. The, the range of uh, costs for buying a house like this is from $500 on up. The, um, my friend bought the house right behind me for $500, plus $55 in some kind of closing costs. So I paid $3,500 for this house and property. And I thought that was high at the time, but uh, I think it'll be worth it. It's really not a lot of money. And since purchasing it last February, I have put 9,500 into materials. So I now have 13,000 into this house. I'm always asking myself if it's worth it. I don't want to get ahead of myself in terms of spending more money than the property will be worth. So uh, right now, I feel like it's worth 13,000. That's where we're at. I usually don't tell people things like how much money I spend on stuff. But I started this YouTube channel because people wanted to uh, follow my progress. And uh, people want to know how much does this cost? And so I'm going to try to keep you informed. And um, another th another comment I get from subscribers and from the neighbors is wanting to learn more about the history of the house. So as I learn things, I'll, I'll share with you. So usually I'm, I'm a pretty private guy and uh, I don't talk a lot, but that's what this, uh, this YouTube channel is for. So also, I've been working on the framing in the area of the dormer, which I added to accommodate the new entry stairway. And uh, you probably can't see this, but there's a new doorway here that will be at the top of the new entry stairs uh, into the second floor. And I had to uh, do some reframing there. So I built a temporary scaffold to work in the stairwell area here by uh, putting some joists on the window ledge over here and then extending them into the floor there between the other old joists so that I can have a platform to work on up above. And now I'm gonna walk onto that platform upstairs and show you that I've been working up in here I wanted to keep the basement from freezing while I was working on masonry uh, at night. It's going to freeze, uh, but I just don't want it freezing and thawing every day. Uh, you know, stuff expands and contracts, and it's hard on old stuff. Anyway, so I missed the last pickup of the lawn and leaf bags uh, from the city. And so I was thinking of putting in uh, straw bales back here to uh, kind of keep the air from flowing in and out of the basement. And instead, I just brought my bags of leaves, which are gonna wait till spring to be picked up anyway, put them down along the bottom of the house there to try to seal it a little bit. Looks messy. I don't like messy. I've learned a few things from the local uh, historical association and I've pieced together that this house was vacant for most of the last 30 years. There was one guy living in here around the year 2000 for a little while. He was probably was the last inhabitant. Um, and yeah, when in the 1980s, this, this neighborhood really declined with uh, the Chevrolet plant shutting down and later on the Buick plant shutting down in Flint, the, uh, the, the economy just was devastated. And, uh, there were a lot of empty houses then. So everybody wants to see more videos and uh, it's just me working here most of the time. So uh, it's not gonna happen fast. And I have a one track mind. So when I'm working, uh, laying cement blocks or reframing or whatever, that's my concentration. And I have a hard time getting myself to stop and get out the camera 
and uh, shoot some video. So this is the way it is. It's mostly me looking and pointing at stuff and talking and explaining what I did. So it is what it is. I guess everything is what it is. The forecast for the rest of the winter is colder. So I probably am not doing any more masonry for a while until spring. So I can still work indoors and I will as long as I'm able. Thank you for watching.